How's the sound? Good? Good. Okay. Action. This soil here. Take a deep breath. This soil here holds our lungs. This soil here gives us breath. This soil here remembers a woman. This soil here remembers a woman who foolish men once called crazy. A woman who understood that destroying the very thing that gives you breath is. Because this soil here was almost destroyed to make way for a business complex or a parking lot or an expressway to the airport. Now that's... This soil here is for you. This soil here remembers that woman who inspired other women to come together to protect this soil and that soil there and the soil we don't even know about. This soil here is proof of their victory. This soil, this soil here still holds the imprints of their feet dancing the dance of victory. But this soil here also holds shame. This soil here remembers the mothers. In 1992, women made this soil here their home. For 11 months they protested in defiance, in refusal, in demand that their sons be released from illegal detainment. On this soil here, they refused to eat. No freedom, no food. This soil here was drenched by their tears, stained by their blood, trampled by the boots of those supposed to protect them. This soil here saw their naked bodies, mothers who had no choice but to strip naked to save their children's lives. This soil here was witness to that curse. This soil here is witness to their power. This soil here remembers what happens when a government makes the mistake of ignoring women. This soil here remembers what happens when promises are broken. But this soil here doesn't need you to be a Moheshimiwa. This soil here doesn't need you to have an ID. This soil here doesn't need you to have even gone to school. This soil here is for you as you are, whenever you need it, however you need it. This soil here is for you. This soil here is for you because of a woman, a woman whose name is Wangare Madai. This soil here is for you to lie down here and paint your dreams in the clouds over there. This soil here is for you to close your eyes and remember that time your Nana Baba brought you to this soil and the jacarandas had painted that soil over there purple. This soil is for you to bring your Mitu here to teach them how to ride a bicycle, to dust the soil off their clothes when they fall down. If you listen carefully, 
in this soil, you can hear whispered prayers and hearts breaking. You can hear the dreams and hopes of so many people who call this soil here home. This soil here remembers what we did yesterday. This soil here will remember what we do tomorrow. This soil here will remember today. This soil here will remember what we do tomorrow. This is a memory poem in honor of Wangari Madai because she knew the soil always remembers. My name is Alea Kasam and I am the A in the Lamb Sisterhood. So I'm such a face toucher, so I have to consciously remember not to when I'm shooting. Okay. <clears throat> when it feels like there's so much to be done, I always remember to take it just one step at a time, like Mekatilili Wamenza. This is her story. So the British showed up in what would become Kenya in the early 1900s as part of the Imperial British East Africa Company. Company for profit. Like any occupying force, they used the same old tricks, you know, forcing people off their land, making them pay taxes for what they now called crown property, forcing them to break their backs, farming rubber and sisal to fatten colonizer pockets. Now, Mekatilili Wamenza was just an ordinary old woman in her 70s, and she had had enough. It enraged her that these white people were coming here to try and replace all the Mizikenda, Chitamadunu, Utsumu, and Chikwehu, their political culture, economy, and religion. So she gathered her people together using the sacred funeral kifudu dance. And she told them, I am not Amganga, and I have no medicine. But I am not afraid to speak the truth and to fight for my people. My powers come from Kaya, rooted in the spirits of our ancestors. Giriyama, is for Wagiriyama, and we shall not be moved. Hers was not a call to war. It was a raising of consciousness. And from that one no, the women joined her. And then the men followed. Soon, <laughs> the British had a rather embarrassing situation on their hands. Nobody was showing up to work in their plantations. Nobody was showing up to carry bags in the hot sun. And nobody paid taxes. Everybody just said no. But the British didn't know how to deal with this no business. See, it was 1913. There was a big war on the horizon. And each colonizing power had the same need. Disposable bodies fight their wars. Mekatilili watched in horror as they began recruiting her sons into their war. And when the British administrator, author, champion, called for a meeting at Chakama Kwahawa Wanje on August 13, 1913, Mekatilili was there. <laughs> you know what she did? <clears throat> she walked up to him and she was carrying a basket with like hen and chicks. And she said to Arthur Champion, I challenge you, you try, just try taking away this chick from the mother hen. Champion just laughed at this old woman and reached for the hen. 
The mother hen pecked at him and he snapped his hand away. Mekatilili looked at him and said, If you dare take away any one of our sons, that is what will happen to you. Hey, he was furious and so he shot at the hen. So she, this old woman, walked up to him, looked him dead in the eye and ta, slapped him. <laughs> oh, wow. So then, then one of Champion's men grabbed Mekatilili and held her in place. Champion, making sure that she was watching, pulled out his gun and fired into the crowd. Again, and again, and again. Who knows how many were killed that day. They imprisoned her. But she, at 70 years old, escaped. But hmm, she still had to walk. She was imprisoned in Kisi. Home was Kilifi. Even a straight line Google search tells you that's at least 831 kilometers. The average person walks about three kilometers per hour. So even if she walked without stopping, eating, sleeping, peeing, it would still take 11 days. Do you know what that much walking does to a body? You stop being a person. You become just a body walking. You become nobody. Meanwhile, the British had increased their brutality. They tried to impose a treaty and told the Guyama that they had to pay a fine for resisting British colonial rule. 10,000 rupees or 3,300 goats. And how do you refuse? How do you resist? One no at a time. One fight at a time. One step at a time. The Giriyama resisted and Mekatilili walked. The British then set flames to homes and granaries, destroyed the sacred shrine of Kaya Fungo, massacred 600 people and burnt the dead Giriyama in the same fire as sheep and goats. The fight was not over. Their fight was not over. When Mekatilili Wamenza returned home, she found that she had sparked a revolution. She had sparked what became one of the most infamous uprisings in Kenya's history against colonizers, that she has allowed me, us, to be here in the depths of yet another age of resistance. I am honored to remember her actions and her story. Just one no at a time, one fight at a time, one step at a time. I am Anne Mora and I am the M in the Lamb Sisterhood. <laughs>